Hey everybody. Today we're talking about one-sided limits. I think it's easiest to understand one-sided limits by looking at examples. So let's jump right in with one. Here's the graph of a function, y equals f of x, and we're interested in what's going on with f near x equals 2. Now the limit as x goes to 2 of f of x does not exist. There is no single value that f of x is getting closer and closer to as x gets closer and closer to 2. There's kind of two different values, 2 and 3, so the limit doesn't exist. But if we restrict our attention and only look at values of x less than 2 as we consider that limit, the situation changes. As x approaches 2 from the left, so x is always less than 2, f of x is approaching 2. Similarly, if we restrict our attention so that x is greater than 2, as x gets closer and closer to 2 from the right, f of x gets closer and closer to 3. In fact, it's always 3 from the right. So this is the idea of a one-sided limit. Here's the notation. We write limit as x goes to 2 from the left, f of x equals 2, and limit as x goes to 2 from the right, f of x equals 3. Now, what I read as x going to 2 from the left and from the right is written with an, sort of an exponent of a minus or plus sign, indicating the direction that you're approaching from. Here's the more general definition for left and right limits. We write limit as x goes to c from the left, f of x equals l, to mean that as x gets closer and closer to c from the left, so x is always less than c, f of x approaches l. Similarly, we write limit as x goes to c from the right, f of x equals l, to mean that as x approaches c from the right, so that x is always greater than c, f of x approaches l. Now, the notation makes a small degree of sense if you think about it this way. When we write x arrow c with that little negative exponent, think of that as meaning x is some value um, where we've taken c and subtracted a little bit. And when we see x arrow c with the exponent of the plus, think of that as meaning that x is c plus a tiny bit. So that puts you to the left and to the right of that value x equals c. Let's do another example. Here's a graph of another function, y equals f of x. Let's start by considering what happens at and near x equals negative 4. So f of negative 4 is the value of the function when x is negative 4. So it's the height of that solid dot. f of negative 4 is 0. Limit as x goes to negative 4 from the left of f of x. So we're imagining x less than negative 4 coming towards negative 4 from the left, asking what happens to the y values. In this case, they're getting closer and closer to 2. Similarly, if x is greater than negative 4, but getting closer and closer to negative 4, f of x gets closer and closer to 2. Now, regardless of what direction we come at negative 4 from, f of x is getting closer and closer to 2. We can say that as x gets closer and closer to negative 4 from either direction, f of x gets closer and closer to 2. That is, the overall limit is equal to 2. Now let's look at x equals 2 and limits at x equals 2. So f of 2 in this case is not going to exist. There is no y value corresponding to that x value. It's not in the domain. On the graph, that corresponds to the fact that those circles are open, not filled in. Limit as x goes to 2 from the left of f of x. So here x is less than 2, but getting closer and closer to 2. And in that case, from looking at the graph, we see that f of x is getting closer and closer to 4. From the right, as x gets closer and closer to 2, f of x is getting closer and closer to 0. Now, the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit are not the same. There is no single value that this function is getting closer and closer to as x gets closer and closer to 2. So the overall limit does not exist. This is a general fact. Let's make it a theorem. The overall limit of um, f of x as x goes to c is equal to l if and only if the two one-sided limits both exist and are the same. So both the left and right-hand limits are equal to l, that same value. So um, here's the, that picture again just to illustrate the overall point. 
in order for a one-sided, I'm sorry, in order for an overall limit to exist, both one-sided limits have to exist and they have to have the same value.